Hey everyone, Poindexter here. We're going on our second mission today in DVG's B-17 Flying Fortress Leader. But before we do that, I need to announce something important regarding gameplay. Not long after I uploaded the mission video last week, I received a post in my comment section from Dean Brown. Now for those of you who don't know, Dean Brown is the designer of Flying Fortress Leader, and he kindly pointed out some errors I made regarding the gameplay rules in my last video, for which I very much appreciate. The good news is that these mistakes are not game-breaking and do not throw the game off course since, thanks to Dean's help, they were caught early. So before we continue with our campaign, we're going to take a moment to correct these gameplay errors. Most of these corrections are simple mistakes in deciphering the rules, while others are a bit more substantial. And the first one is regarding Luftwaffe squadron reassignment and those German critical hexes. Though I did execute the rule properly, the reassignment is only done at the end of the month and not at the beginning. So we're going to place those Luftwaffe squadrons that were moved in the last video back to their original location. Fortunately, this mistake would not have affected our last mission since the Luftwaffe response was poor and no German squadrons were activated. Second is regarding the starting SO points. I indicated that those 50 starting SO points are the only SO points you can use at the beginning of the campaign. This is incorrect. We also received the 15 weekly SO points as well. So, we actually start the base campaign with 65 points. Therefore, we'll add those 15 SO points to the 10 points we already have from the first mission, and we'll use them to purchase two B-17 groups, the 91st and 92nd, who will enter the game at the green level. Though this late purchase may seem gamey, it does not affect my original plan for the last mission as I was only going to use the three chosen bombers regardless. That's why I bought them in the first place. We now have one SO point remaining. Which leads to the third correction regarding the purchase of starting groups. The asterisk denotes the level of starting groups if you purchase more than the total number of initial groups. In other words, if I would have bought a 5th or 6th bomber group in my initial purchase, which I just did, that group would begin as green. From now on, all future group purchases will be at the recruit level, though we can spend 4 SO points to promote them to green. Next is the placement of the U-boat counters. In the last video, I moved them from the main map to the ETO theater. Apparently, I had it right the first time, as this move is incorrect. Only targets for the Allied invasion campaign are placed here, so the U-boats will go back to the main board. Again. Finally, the last correction concerns experience points. In the last video, I had planned to use the B-24s of the 93rd group as the lead group in order for them to receive five experience points for destroying the target, with the remaining groups receiving two. That was incorrect. If the target is destroyed, all groups receive two experience points. All groups receive one experience point for each mission they fly, regardless of whether the target is damaged or not. And groups receive one experience point for every bandit they destroy during the mission. Thanks again to Dean for reaching out to me so I can make these corrections. I want to be as accurate as possible when showcasing this game, and I will try to be more rules conscious in the future. Now that we've got everything in place, let's get started on our second mission.
First, we'll move the calendar marker to week two. Next, we'll receive our weekly allotment of SO points, which will be 15, plus the extra point held over from last week, which makes 16 points. However, those pesky UBOs are active on the board, so we lose 9 SO points, which brings our final total to 7. Resting our B24 group this week would eliminate 3 damage points and bring their stats back to OK. We'll send them on an anti-submarine mission next week. Today, we're going to fly two missions. We're going to use our four B-17 groups and split them into two strike forces. Our second strike mission will be sent back to Webelgem, France to hopefully finish off the airfield there. Our first target, however, will be the airfield at Florence, Belgium, and Hex 13. This is a deeper penetration than our first mission, so we'll definitely be escorting this bombing force with Spitfires. The target allows for three bombers to be allocated to the strike force, but we are only going to send two. With 12 hits needed to destroy the airfield, we're most likely not going to eliminate the target, unless we're extremely lucky but hopefully we'll do some significant damage. Hex 13 is at the extreme range for our Spitfire escorts, as they have an indicated range of four, which means they have a range of four hexes. When they reach the target area, they will be forced to turn back, and our two B-17 groups will be on their own. Now we'll assign our groups to the mission. The Spitfires of the 4th Fighter Group will fly escort. For our bombers, we'll add the recruits of LeMay's 305th Bomb Group and the 92nd Bomb Group. We'll arm all of our bombers with airfield-busting M30s once again. We'll place our counters on the tactical board and once again have our Spitfires fly high escort to counter our German commander's out of the sun tactic. Now we'll place our mission markers and waypoints on the strategic map. Our path will be straight to the target and back. We'll flip over waypoint marker two to remind us when our Spitfires will have to turn back. We roll for the Luftwaffe response and the roll is a five but with the minus two response modifier, the final result is a three. Another poor response from the Germans today. Now the only thing our bombers will have to deal with is flak over the target. With our flight in the air, we draw a card for the target bound event, and we draw Combined Bomber Operations, which adds four damage points to our target. A good luck draw if there ever was one. We place a four damage marker on the target airfield. Since there is no Luftwaffe presence in our mission path due to the poor response, we move our marker directly to the target area. Reaching their range limit, our Spitfire escorts are forced to turn back. Our groups are now over the already damaged airfield and line up to drop their bombs. First up is the 305th group. We roll one dice for flak attacks, which will hit on a modified six or greater. And we roll a five which is modified down to a 4 due to the B-17's durability rating of 1. The flak causes no damage to the B-17. The 305th prepare to drop their bombs. The B-17s have a minus 1 air-to-ground attack rating, but the airfield has a plus 2 modifier, and the M-30s have a plus 2 modifier against dispersed targets, 
for a final modification of plus three. The 305th call bombs away. And the rolls are a one, one, and three. Modified to a four, four, and six. The B-17 group completely misses the target and no hits are scored. Clearly the 305th need to be sent on more practice missions. Now the 92nd bomb group lines up on the target. We roll one dice for flak attacks and the roll is a four, modified to a three due to the B-17's durability rating of one. No flak hits are scored on the group. The 92nd have the same stats as the 305th group, so there is a plus three modifier added to the bomb rolls. The 92nd calls bombs away, and a one, two, and 10 are rolled, which are modified to four, five, and 13. The 13 is the only bomb to strike the target and causes two hits on the airfield. After another poor showing from our bombers, our groups turn back and head for home. We draw a homebound event card, and we draw choppy weather. We are to perform formation checks for all bomber groups each movement turn, but since there will be no Luftwaffe attacks on our return flight, the check is redundant and we will ignore it. And our groups make it back to England in one piece. There are six points of damage, which falls into the range of light damage. So we place a light damage marker on our target card and we return it to the target area. For our second mission, we'll choose our last two B-17s from the 97th and 91st bomb groups. The 91st group automatically comes with a commander, Ray, whose specialty is evasion. When using evasion, the group rolls two dice for each bandit attack this turn. The lowest number is considered the attack number. If the group is slow, it cannot perform any air-to-air -air attacks the turn it is used. We can also use evasion against flak attacks but we have to apply a minus one modifier to the air to ground attack rolls. Ray also has the ability to promote this group to the next skill level with fewer experience points. We'll be sending both bombers back to Webblegem airfield and hopefully finish it off. We will replace the medium damage counter with the equivalent damage number according to the target card. In this case, a 5 matches the lowest number for the medium damage indicator. So we'll place a 5 on our target card. We'll arm our bombers with M30 bombs and we'll place our markers on the strategic map. Now we roll for the Luftwaffe response from our German commander and the roll is a 6. When we apply the minus 2 response modifier, the final result is a four. Another poor response from the Germans. Fortunate, since our groups will have no fighter protection. Our second mission is underway, and we draw a target-bound event card. And our card is the Germans are adapting. We will have to remove any tactics counters from two of our groups. Since we only have one group with a commander tactic, the 91st, we will remove it from our bomber. The tactic cannot be used on this mission. Our group arrives over the target and we roll for flak attacks. We roll two dice for flak and hit on a modified seven or greater. 
First up is the 97th group. We roll two dice for flat, and the roll is a one and three, which are modified to a zero and two because of the B-17's durability. In either case, no hits are scored against the 97th. The B-17 will now attack the airfield. The bomber has a plus one air-to-ground modifier, the target adds a plus one modifier, and the M30s a plus two against dispersed targets for an overall modification of plus four. The 97th calls bombs away, and she pummels the airfield with a two, seven, and seven, which are modified to six, 11, and 11. Both 11s cause two hits apiece for a total of four damage points. Now it's the 91st's turn. We roll two dice for flak attacks, and we roll a two and a one. Even without the minus one modifier due to the B-17's durability, both attacks are ineffective and no damage is done. The 91st prepares for her moment of glory. Only one more hit is needed to destroy the airfield. The 91st has a minus one air to ground modifier, but we add a plus one modifier for the target and plus two for the M30s, which gives us a final modifier of plus two. The 91st calls bombs away, and the rolls are a nine, five, and one, which are modified to 11, seven, and three. The seven and three miss, but the 11 causes two hits. And the airfield is finally destroyed. With the airfield destroyed, we gain three victory points, while at the same time destroying three bandits, which we indicate on the bandits' disrupted row. We also draw a new airfield target card and place it in the target area. Our victorious bombers turn back for home, but first we draw a homebound event card and we draw Tactics Defeated, which removes all remaining tactic counters from our group. Since this has already been done, we ignore the result. And we finally head back to England. Our groups finally gave the Germans a bloody nose. Unfortunately, our overall bombing needs serious improvement. LeMay's 305th group was a complete bust again this week, with no bombs finding their mark. The Grim Reaper sounds menacing, but so far this group has been anything but. Perhaps they should change their name to Leper Colony. The 97th continues to impress with their accurate bombing and are quickly becoming the superstars of this campaign. If there is a silver lining regarding our rather poor bombing, it's that the Luftwaffe has also been struggling as well with inaccurate flak and a string of poor Luftwaffe responses. Not that I'm complaining. Taking a look at the player log, we see that the 97th and 91st received two experience points for their successful destruction of the airfield. The 91st is close to promotion, followed by the 305th. It's also good to finally see some victory points on the sheet after two weeks. Well, that wraps up our second week of missions for B-17 Flying Fortress Leader. Next week, we'll get our B-24s back in the sky to hopefully punish some U-boats maybe go after some targets that are not airfields. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again soon.